Hey everybody, SF Logic Ninja here, or you can call me David Earl. I don't really care. Anyway, um, great to see a, a couple new faces around, um, new subscribers. I hope that you're uh, having fun perusing my videos and stuff. Um, like I said, I'm going to try and put these up once a week. So uh, here's my weekly endeavor. Uh, I want to show you guys how to use multi-channel instruments today in Logic 8. So enjoy. Ciao. Hey everybody, it's me again. Uh, sorry if I sound kind of tired. I've already done this video like three times tonight. I uh, had some problems. Uh, I'm running Leopard now, which is actually a really op awesome uh, operating system. Uh, but you, you got to remember to upgrade all your programs, uh, like screen snaps, which I do all my tutorials with. Uh, hence my little filler video that I uploaded for you a little while back. So let's see, it's... Uh, Oh, it's 9 o'clock p.m., so I'm going to get this done and go home and play some Metroid and go to bed. All right, folks, so the question is, what's today's lesson? Well, it's multi-channel instruments. Um, what are multi-channel instruments? Well, let's pull up an Ultra Beat, which is what we were using last time. So let's see, Ultra Beat. Now you see that we have a option between stereo or multi-output. So let's select multi-output. All right, so I got an ultra beat here, and I'm gonna. I got my sequences here, and I'm gonna find one that has a couple of interesting things going on in it. There we go. That one's pretty good. And I'm going to say, all right, here's my volume. Okay, I can pull this back and forth for volume. That's pretty cool. And then I've got a mute, a little solo button, panning, and then I have my output. All right, so my output, I'm gonna go down here to my kick. The output for the kick right now is main. What that means is that it's gonna be sent out output one and two, which is where the ultra beat is instanced. I think that's a word. Um, now let's say, um, I'm gonna take my kit and I'm gonna go out a mono output. I'm gonna go out 17. I'm gonna take all snare related stuff and send it out 18. So as you see, I'm just grabbing right there where it says output and I'm just changing it. Claps will go at 810 as well. What the hell? Uh, here's another snare. Um, yeah, 18. We like 18. All right, now we get to my toms. Now, the toms, since they might be panned in a stereo field, I'm going to go ahead and send them to um, 3 and 4. So there's tom, 3 and 4. Mid tom, 3 and 4. Uh, high tom, 3 and 4. And I'm going to take my hi hats and crash symbols and things like that. And I'll go out five and six. Five and six. Five and six. And five and six. Maybe I'll take my uh, symbol here. Go to five and six. And there we go. Oh, I got another kick up here. Maybe I'll send that out 17 as well. And there's another open hi-hat. I'll have that go out uh, five and six. And let's see, what else have I got? Simple bass. Yeah, well, simple bass will go out. Uh, what mono output do I have? 19. There we go. Okay, so I've set all these outputs up, but everything's still going to go through output 1 and 2 because I haven't set up those paths. So when you use multiple outputs, you have to use auxiliaries. So I'm going to open up, whoa, <laughs> boy, I'm having a great night, let me tell you. Sorry, that was my microphone falling. Let me just uh, stabilize it. <laughs> we'll see if I have time to edit that out. Anyway, <clears throat> this will be the somewhat comedic episode. Ah. <sighs> What was I doing? Oh, yeah, I was making a mixer. So I'm going to go to window. I'm actually going to open up a separate mixer. There we go. I'm just going to point this down a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't break anything. And I'm going to drag this mixer over here to my right screen. Open it up. There we go. So I need to create auxiliaries in order to use those multiple outputs that I had in UltraBeat. So I'll hit the plus button. And... I'll make them stereo. How many stereo ones did I have? That's right, I had uh, five and six and three and four. So 
two stereos. And how many mono? Let's see. One, two, three. I think it's three mono. So. Okay. So one and two is coming directly out of the instrument. So now I want to create three and four, five and six, and then 17, 18, 19. So for three and four, I'm going to go to my stereo auxiliary. And you'll see that its inputs are bus, which we're used to, Ableton, Reason. These are for rewire instruments, which I'll probably go over uh, the next lesson. Then we have instrument one. Since I made a multi-channel instrument, the minute you do that, the inputs of your auxiliaries will be able to receive these outputs. Okay? So I'm going to go 3 and 4. Then I'm going to make 5 and 6. And you see what's happening? It's actually shoving those auxiliaries over to be right next to the uh, instrument, and it combines them all together. See how there's no lines here separating the auxiliaries from the instrument? That's actually kind of cool because it keeps things organized in such a way that you don't get lost trying to figure out what's going on with your, uh, your multi-channel outputs. They're linked to the instrument now. Very cool. So here we go. Uh, 17. 18. And finally 19. And a little trick, if you option click on a fader, it takes them to zero, which is kind of cool. And if I go over here and I play a rhythm at an ultra beat now, you can see that it's all separated out. Not the best pattern in the world, but hey, I didn't write it. So um, that's how you can separate them out. Now, now the obvious advantages to these is that you can solo certain bits out. You can apply compression and EQ to specific voices of the ultra beat. And if you had something like an EXS24, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, you can do stuff like have a whole drum kit, right, in your EXS24. You can copy the group, reverse all of the samples within that group, and have it play through a different auxiliary. So um, pretty fun stuff. Um, Maybe I'll do that later, but I'm not sure. That would probably come, like, maybe, I think that's about three or four months out now. Uh, I've got a number of other things lined up for you fellas and fellettes, uh, excuse me, um, uh, all you guys and gals. Yeah, I'll put it that way. Like I said, comedic episode. I'm losing my mind. I've been here a long time. Anyway, um, so if you want to put a plug-in on those auxiliaries, you just go right up here and pop your EQ, pop your compression on, whatever you want to do, balance all your levels, and uh, you get the ultimate control over the uh, voices of your Ultra Beat and or EXS24 or any third-party plugin that is optimized for multi-channel output within Logic 8. And uh, there you go. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, I'm probably not going to have time to edit this video, so for all of the technical difficulties, I apologize. Uh, if I have a chance to go back and edit it, I will. And until then, and uh, hope... Hope you have a great week and uh, get some sleep. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Hope you guys got a kick out of that. Um, yeah, so I had a rehearsal today uh, with a group, and it was pretty cool. We had three Mac uh, laptops going uh, with main stage and Logic 8, and it was pretty neat, and I'm hoping maybe um, next time I have a rehearsal, I'll film it and show you guys how I'm... Uh, incorporating Logic 8 and Mainstage into a live performance context. Um, but until then, I hope you have a great week. I know that I'll be busy as heck. So um, I will check out your comments, though, and I'll try and answer whatever questions I can. So uh, until our next cartoon, take care. Bye-bye.